Scotland at their strongest for this game. Barring accidents, I imagine this will be the side that will probably face Finland in the World Cup in Helsinki on June the 13th. It's the one that lost narrowly to Brazil. Brian Greenoff, the only change, coming in for his first match of the tour in place of Mike Doyle. Phil Thompson, Mike Shannon and Trevor Brooking, the only three players to play in all three games. Now, the American team, they lost 2-0 to Brazil. The second goal coming in the very last minute, so really they're going to be no pushover at all. And some very familiar names. Bob Rigby, an American in goal. Bob Smith, the number two, is also an American. Number three, Stuart Jump of Crystal Palace. Four, Keith Eddy of Sheffield United. Five, Mike England, formerly of Spurs, Cardiff and Wales. Number six, Bobby Moore. Seven, Julio V, who's a Hungarian-born player. Eight, Tommy Smith of Liverpool. Nine, Giorgio Quinalia, an Italian international. Ten, the incomparable Pelé. And eleven, Dave Clements of Northern Ireland at Everton. So that then is the setup. The referee is Walter Ungabula from Switzerland. And Bobby Moore in the American side, now playing over here for San Antonio Thunder. And for once on the same side as Pele, his great adversary in so many games when Brazil faced England in the World Cup and so on. England captain Jerry Francis. A fairly thin crowd here in the John F. Kennedy Stadium today because although it's a public holiday, just 500 yards or so away from this stadium is the gigantic baseball stadium, the veteran stadium, where in fact Philadelphia Phillies will be playing baseball this afternoon against Chicago, a key match. Well, you didn't get that shot in there, Bob, but they can edit that, that, those words out and we'll come to that a bit later on. Any more shots of Pele? Another shot of Pele. Bob, can you answer me when I talk to you, please? London saying a crowd shot would be useful before the start. Bob? Bob. So beautiful sunshine then for the crowd in the John F. Kennedy Stadium as we wait now for the start. So England kick off then in an all pale yellow strip, attacking the goal to our left. The American side in red shirts, blue shorts and red stockings. Jerry Francis on the ball for England, who lost to Brazil and then beat Italy in the most dramatic fashion in the Yankee Stadium. The ball coming through here, but cleared. Here's McMills for England. And this is V, man who came on as a substitute against Brazil for the Americans, and Ken Burpee former Sheffield United manager now managing the American side said he really transformed the side Mike England now playing the short ball towards Bobby Moore here's Stuart Jump on the far side Francis going back collecting the ball played quickly by Greenock now to Keegan Greenock who had a slight hamstring injury that he uh, sustained just before the Scotland match at Hampton Park here's Jerry Francis now the ball coming through to Bob Smith, or Bobby Moore rather, to Keith Eddy. They forward to Penny, his first touch. And already 
getting a feel of two tackles there from Trevor Cherry and uh, also from Mick Mills. And Pele just hobbling a little bit there. Crunching tackles have been a part of his footballing lifestyle for so many years, but it's a free kick which Bobby Moore will take for America. Stadium that's used for American football. Moore with the free kick, voted high there towards Pelly. Bill Thompson got his header in though. Here's Colin Todd. Passed a fitness test yesterday on a slight hamstring. Francis calling Keegan towards him. Francis again now for England. Trying to find Pearson away on the right there. Mike England cutting it out. Dave Clem. Well, Eddie let that one go. Shannon was pouncing on it. Francis was right up in there. So too is Stuart Pearson now. Pearson going beyond Dave Clements. A little tip in there towards Brooking. Tip in once more towards the far side. But Mike England got his header in. And here's Cherry now for England. And an offside. Don Reevy made it absolutely clear to the England players uh, a couple of hours ago, just after breakfast in the hotel when he had a team meeting, that he wanted a really all-out performance to finish this tour on a high note, leading towards that vital World Cup qualifying game in Helsinki on June the 13th. Here's Tommy Smith, though, now for the Americans. To V. A flick on again, and it nearly came through to Kinalia, but played back to Ray Clements in the England goal. Todd. Keegan trying to brush his way past Jump. Here's Jump now, Crystal Palace. On again now as V takes it up. Jump continued his run now for the Americans. Played it towards Pelly. Hit first time. He tried to swerve it. But for once it didn't happen for the great Pelle. But an interesting break certainly there by the Americans down the left. With Stuart Jump's ball turned inside there. Pelle slicing it and slicing it wide. Pelle again. Francis. Jump again in quickly. Here's Pele. Jump once more towards Dave Clements. But Phil Thompson is there. And again Stewart jump. Playing it wide here for Tommy Smith. Trying to play it inside. Uh, Mick Mills there for Bobby Smith, the American fullback, but... Uh, and getting it away now with that clearance from Trevor Brookie. Moore, Clements, and a throw. Which Brooking will take. Brian Greenall. Keegan hustling after it. Moore nicely in control. Well, I can't think what the whistle went for, but it uh, was given as a free kick to America. Ball right down in that corner. A free kick given. But I fail to see what for. Moore chipping it with all the coolness and confidence in the world to the far side across his own goal to Stewart Jump. Here's Mike Ingram. Keith Eddy. V. Towards Pele, just cut out by Francis and Bill Thompson, that reliable defender again there. Trevor Cherry in the middle of the field, finally getting the ball into touch. Off an American foot for an English throw. <laughs> Brian Greenoff. Shannon. That was cut out by England. Tommy Smith to Pele. Back to Tommy Smith again of Liverpool. Julio V. Hungarian born player. Now becoming a naturalized American, finding Bobby Moore. English all the way. Stuart Jump. V. 
Good swift challenge though by Phil Thompson. And here's Pearson. Keegan. A little back heeler for Francis. Here's Todd. The Americans lost 4 0 to the Italians in the opening game of uh, this series, then 2 0 to Brazil. Pearson playing it back to Francis. Tried to get a shot in. Shannon is right in there. They're all jumping, and it might have come to Brooking, but there was a free kick. They lost 4 0 to Italy, but that was really only with two goals coming late in the game. Another strange free kick. Jump. Smith. Played forward for Finalia. McBills to Trevor Brookie. Mills, who came on in the second half in the Yankee Stadium against Brazil, against Italy rather, and put in such a gutsy performance, particularly in the last horrific ten minutes when it looked as though England might lose their 3-2 lead. But now Stuart Pearson taking uh, opportunity from a mistake by Tommy Smith, through to Mick Channon now for England. The cross comes in low and Bobby Moore, as cool as you like there, as he's done so often for England, now denying England probably a chance of an opening goal there. It's out with Stuart John. Long, slanting ball here towards Keith Eddy. No, the ball out of play. England on the move again now with Trevor Cherry. Francis. Cherry. Big first time, just wide. Well, that's the sort of thing that Don Revy would want to see from Trevor Cherry, as well as doing uh, a good, strong tackling game in the middle of the field to come forward occasionally and have a potted goal. Moore. Pelle. Pitch that was mown yesterday and is not in bad condition. A lot of rain yesterday that quietened it down a little bit as Thompson plays it back to Cutters. Mills. Chip forward again towards Kevin Keegan. But Keegan was beaten in the air by Bobby Smith. An American boy. Smith with the throw. Greenock getting the better of Julio V. Bobby Smith and Tommy Smith there, Kevin Keegan with a throw to England. Pele's family also in town. Keegan trying to push that header down for Mick Shannon, but Tommy Smith is in there for America. Now John. Eddie. Pick wide for Clements. Pele. Well, he didn't quite come off as he meant, but in the end he found Finalia. But here's Brooking now for England. Shannon making one of those good, well-timed runs of his, turning well. A little chip now towards Stuart Pearson, too high for him. Keegan's coming up in support. Here's Keegan, number seven, supported by Mills. Keegan. Played wide now for Colin Todd. Chipped in again for Pearson, a back header there, and a header that time by Mike Shannon, caught by Bob Rigby, though. Shannon's header, caught by Rigby. Brookie. Mills. Now Francis. 
A long shot taken well by the American goalkeeper. Bob Rigby of New York Cosmos. Dave Clements. Pele. Pinari. Pele. Played this time for Eddie. Here's Tommy Smith. Tommy Smith again. Pele. Well, he got past uh, Cherry, all right. And he got past Brookie as well. Cherry coming back in again, but a tough tackle there by Cherry. And a free kick. That was the tackle. And a free kick now to America. Pele behind it. Dave Clements is also there. I think Pele might well be the striker and Stuart Pearson being told by the Swiss referee to get back 10 yards. Now it'll be interesting to see what Pele can do with this. And a goal for the Americans really would upset the apple cart. And he's got it through there and it called for a good save by Ray Clements. Pele dipping that past the wall and Bob Smith now inside for Keith Eddy floating in once more on the far side Pele trying to get up to it and the, in the end it goes behind for the goal kick I hope you're seeing pictures at home because I'm seeing nothing up here in the commentary box high above the John F. Kennedy Stadium. Francis, the Brookie. Todd. Don't hit in again there, but uh, Bob Smith tried to get his head to it but failed, but he recovered quickly enough to turn the ball away and to keep it in play as Julio V takes it up now for the Americans. Pelle is right up there, so too is Pinalia. V, a tremendous burst here for the Americans now, going all the way, and in the end he was thwarted by Phil Thompson. Tremendous run there by the American number seven, Julio V. Stopped in the end by Thompson. Well, the uh, American manager, Ken Furphy, I should think, could be reasonably satisfied with his team's performance in the first quarter of an hour. But here's Keegan now for England. On the far side, Tom. Cherry. Shannon coming away to pick up that loose ball and finding Mills in support for him. Now here's Brooking. A little bit of space here for him to get those beautiful crosses of his in, but that time Mike England got it away well for the Americans. Brooking again with a chance to float another of those deceptive crosses. But instead playing it short for Kevin Keegan. Here's Tommy Smith for America. To Pelle. Beautiful bit of play by Pelle, and here's V again. Obviously a player of considerable skill. Pelle trying to float one with the outside of his boot towards Kinalia. And now Francis. To Todd. Shannon. Wide here for Stuart Pearson. Brooking coming up very well indeed with a well-timed run there for England and trying to get a first-time cross in, but it goes off Tommy Smith for the corner to England. Keegan. With the corner. Francis chasing for it on the far side with Dave Clements and it's Dave Clements who comes away with it for America.
Pele. A little chip again for Kinalia. Todd. Play for Brookings. Mills to Keegan. And all the tricks there against Bob Smith. And in fact, in the end, getting a court. No goal kick. by his Liverpool teammate Kevin Keegan. That must be an odd situation for the pair of them. Eddie now. Pelle coming in and Trevor Cherry trying to get in first and uh, getting in quickly enough to put off the Brazilian star. And in fact, it's a free kick to England. And it's with Jerry Francis. Todd outside him. Now here's Francis. Nice little chip there, but too far for Kevin Keegan. And England at the moment with uh, something like 18 minutes having gone, the score at nil-nil, with their strongest side, still unable really to reproduce the snap that they found with that weakened side in the second half of that dramatic match against Italy in the Yankee Stadium on Friday night, Saturday afternoon, as you saw it. Kinalia. Being chased by Brian Greenoff. Kinalia doing well, getting the cross in. Clements with the catch. Moore's header. Brooking to pick it up. Keegan away on his left. Shannon. A touch for Todd. There's the early cross coming in towards Stuart Pearson. Not it down again towards Keegan and Rigby got it well. It looked suspiciously like handball by Keegan, I thought. As this cross came in, hit early by Todd. Pearson got up well. That was a handball. Now Pelle. Eddie, Clements, Jump's gone away outside him, here's Stuart Jump now for America, with Kinalia in the middle and V in the middle too, V got the header in, Kinalia very nearly got the touch as well, and really most of the scares have been in the England penalty area in this opening 20 minutes, England territory have had more of the game, Pearson taking a bit of a knock there, but it's the American forwards who, on one or two occasions, have looked uh, the more dangerous side. Here's Kinalia again. Pele getting up well. That time, Jerry beat him in the air. It's back with Mike Shannon. Brooking. Played so well on this tour, Trevor Brooking. Cherry. Mills. Got a space here again for him to consider all the possibilities. Stead finds Trevor Brooking. There's the shot by Brooking just past that American post. And in fact, there must have been a deflection on the way because it's given England the corner. Stuart Pearson on the line. Bill Thompson's gone up on the line as well. Two English players on that American goal line. Shannon deep, Keegan in there, Jerry Francis in there as well as the cross comes in. Looking again with a chance to uh, flick it in once more. And Bobby Moore getting it away. Cherry 
a short pass to Jerry Francis. Tucked in again there towards Stuart Pearson and uh, Rigby hitting that goalpost a bit of a thump. And a goal kick to America. Back so hard that he moved the post. Wow. Here's Pele. And there was uh, Stuart Pierce, or rather Kevin Keegan. <laughs> Smith only half making that challenge, and it uh, falls for Trevor Brooking. Still with Brooking, and Dahl taken out of there by Keith Eddy, and that's a free kick to England. Well, that was a bit unlike Keith Eddy, that... Uh, challenge there on Brooking. He got past one challenge very well there by Tommy Smith but he couldn't get past the one by Ed. Keegan and Brooking, the men standing over this free kick. Pele doing a bit of organising in the American wall. Some 24 yards out, slightly left of centre, played there for Kevin Keegan and hit into the corner of the net. One nil to England, halfway through the first half. Brooking looking up, considering that free kick, plays it short there for Kevin Keegan, rifling it through the wall and into the net. One nil to England. Well, it was the breakthrough that England wanted. They looked very relaxed, a little bit casual, and some way from producing in the first 20 minutes the really emphatic performance that Don Revie wanted from them. But Kevin Keegan now has put England that one goal into the lead. I think the loudspeaker gave that goal to Trevor Brooking, but I think you saw quite clearly that, in fact, it was Brooking's free kick and whacked in by Kevin Keegan. Here's Colin Todd now for England on the far side. Francis. Now Mills. Now Shannon. Chipped in again there, and Rigby plucking that one out of the air before it could come through to Keegan. Eddie. V. Pele. Eddie played nicely there towards V, who'd made a well-timed run, but again, some good shadowing there by Phil Thompson. He really has had a magnificent tour, Phil Thompson. He's so dependable, so reliable, right the way through this tour. And now finding Colin Todd. Here's Jerry Francis. Todd again. Thompson. Well, not a particularly good ball at uh, Green off there supporting England. Finding Mills and now Shannon. Little touch through there for Pearson. Trying to get a one-two going. Here's Jerry Francis now picking up the loose one. Strange dark green line was uh, in fact a white line earlier in the morning. The groundsman thought that should be a mark there as well. They have a bit to learn and it'll come now for Francis and that was charged down by Bobby Moore. Groundsman put two extra white lines in and with an hour to go to the kickoff they hurriedly had to be scratched out with green paper. Mills now for England. Trevor Brookie taking on Bob Smith there. There's a little curler on the far side towards Colin Todd. Todd must have been fractionally offside. And so it's a free kick to the Americans. Bob Smith now. To Bobby Moore. Bob Smith. And the ball out of play for an England throw. Also 
also in this championship today. Brazil playing Italy at New Haven. And of course, if the Italians win that and England win very, very comfortably here, England, in spite of losing to Brazil in the opening game, could still win this tournament. But I'm sure most of all in Don Reeve's mind is the fact that he wants to get the side reasonably settled in his mind before that match comes up against Finland in Helsinki, the World Cup qualifier on June 13. Ball back with goalkeeper Bob Rigby. Ken Furphy. And on the left of your picture, Eddie Fermani, the former Charlton manager, also assisting with this American team out here. Dave Clements now for America. Jerry Francis. Trying to get something going in that box there, and it very nearly came off from Shannon, but the Americans finally got it back to Rigby. Bobby Moore. Clements. V. It spells his name V E E. Would you believe? Eddie. To Smith. Back to V again. Now Bob Smith. American boy who didn't in fact kick a football until he was 19 years old. Here playing for America, he's still only 23. Now V again. Made inside there for Clements. The shot was charged down and finally cleared by Mick Mills. Now an interesting two against two as Keegan comes up quickly. England breaking out quickly. Here's Greenoff. Shannon over on this near side. Brooking, look at the space for him now to dip another little cross him, but instead he hit it straight at Tommy Smith. Now he does get it in towards Sir Pearson, and it's just past the post. Brooking at his best, in fact, playing uh, a lot of these shots wide down the touchline, putting in some really deceptive and delicate crosses. And men like Mike England and Bobby Moore being hard-pressed to keep them out. Smith, oh, he gave that away. Pearson now to Shannon. Now, will he take on his player? No, he won't. Keegan's in there. Number two for Kevin Keegan. Beautiful piece of opportunism there by England. Shannon spotting the opening. And what a tremendous run from nowhere by little Kevin Keegan again. It really came from nowhere. Shannon spotted Keegan's run. Look at Keegan going through there. Beautiful timing, beautiful finishing. 2-0 to England. Kevin Keegan's second goal, and the second for England as well. So, with 30 minutes gone, that looks much better for England, and in fact, the skies are clouding over a little bit now. It'll get a bit cooler out there. Still pretty muggy. The temperature getting towards the 70s. Pelé. Great shot. Just past that English post that time. Brock Pelé. Pushed there by Ray Clements. And a corner for America. But Pelé showing a flash of the old Pelé there. So a very good piece of goalkeeping there by Ray Clements and a corner for America. Hit low towards Pele again and another corner. Both goals to Kevin Keegan with 30 minutes gone. Stuart Jock. Deep cross again. Mike England's come up for this one. And in fact was pushing in on the back of Brian Greenoff, giving England the free kick. This is the pitch where they play the famous Army-Navy American football game, and it's a pitch that's playing pretty well at the moment. Rookie. Now Francis, Todd lurking again on that far touchline. Both, both uh, 
wingers and both fullbacks, in fact, getting a lot of space down the touchlines. And Don Revy very well satisfied, I would think, with this opening 30 minutes, particularly with those two goals that have given England that very useful lead. Now, here comes the cross coming in once more. Keegan again going in there, but Rigby beat him that time. Eddie letting it go through to V. Here's Tommy Smith. Pele making a run. He looked to me to be offside. In any case, the ball was out of play. Pele having a part of his shirt torn. In fact, uh, all the American team wearing a certain brand of shirt. And Pele, I gather, has got a contract with another company and will not wear those same markings. Well, one of those markings has now come off. Mike England versus Stuart Pearson, and Pearson recovering quicker from that one. Got Brooking in the middle. And he's got Francis in support here. Keegan on the far side. Brooking, another of those crosses, this time hitting Bobby Moore. Pearson. Todd and Albers. Now he's given that to Pele, who flicks it away towards V, but uh, Brian Green off there again for England. Lovely ball there played to Colin Todd. Now for Brooking. Using their wings well, England, and there's another cross coming in there. Green off just wide. England really using their wings well, particularly Brooking. Another of his beautiful crosses, and Brian Greenoff from defence right in there, but just a yard wide. Bobby Moore, Dave Clements. Now Thompson to Francis. Todd couldn't keep it in, a throw to America. With 11 minutes to go to half time, England leading by two goals to nil, both scored by Kevin Keegan. Stewart jump now for America. Nice little pass there for Dave Clements. V again going hard down that touchline. But it'll be a throw to England. Brooking. Mills. Shannon. Trying to outstrip Smith. And making a very good job of it still with Shannon. Mike England coming in there to try and make the challenge. And in the end, Mike Shannon missing his kick. Now Tommy Smith. Back for Bob Smith. England. Well, uh, Shannon's lost a boot. The Americans now find uh, Stewart jump on the far side. Here's Julio V. Dave Clements. Eddie. And England get possession again with Mick Mills. Shannon in an offside position as he tries to get back onside. He tells Mick Mills, don't pass to me. Instead, it's with Pearson. Shannon still doing some repairs to his boots as Keegan now finds Brian Greenoff, linking up more and more from defence with attacks as England come forward. Rookie turning it in again towards Keegan. Now Francis, Todd away on that far touchline. Todd's cross again there towards uh, Jerry Francis, but headed away by Mike England. And now Dave Clements. Kinalia, haven't seen very much of him so far. Now Pele. Now Kinalia chasing it on this one, and Mills getting in a very good tackle indeed for England. But in fact, the whistle had gone for a free kick. 
Well, that seemed a strange decision. And it looked to me as though Mills played the ball. But the referee decided otherwise. Mr. Ungabula from uh, Switzerland. Giving another free kick to America. And Pele has once been very, very close from this sort of range. And a goal for the Americans now would open it up a little bit for them. There's Pele with the kick through the wall. A good save again. He is absolutely marvellous the way he gets those balls. There seems to be no chance through the wall. But there he is, curling it. And a very good save indeed by Clements. So, a corner to America on the far side. Both it deep towards Mike England. Again, a foul by England. On Phil Thompson and a free kick. Well, Pearson getting a little bit of treatment there. Not had the best luck. He was injured against uh, Brazil in the opening game of this series. Phil Thompson to Colin Todd. What a strange ball there by Todd going straight into a clutch of red shirts and Tommy Smith found Keith Eddy. But they've given it away again now as Brooking takes it up for England. Keegan. The man on a hat-trick. Cherry. Leaving it for Francis. Mills. Linking up well. Shannon. Taking on Tommy Smith, getting a beautiful one-two going there with Keegan. Didn't quite come off in the end. Lost a little bit of momentum, but there it might come through. No, Mike England hoofing it away again. Mills now to Keegan. England playing with a lot of confidence now coming forward. A little chip in again. And a goal. Stewart jump now for America. Inside for Keith Eddy. The long ball forward, seeking out Pele, finding him, but Pele found the green off, was right with him too. Pele, another little flick there, but once again, Brian Greenoff was there, doing a very good job indeed, turning the ball away into touch for a throw to America. Pele once more. There's his cross coming in. Clemens calling for it and getting it. Well, a misunderstanding there. Shannon waited and uh, Bobby Smith got in for America. V right up there, but Todd in possession for England. Here's Thompson. Francis to Brooking. Just over five minutes to go to half time here in the early afternoon in Philadelphia. England leading by two goals to nil. Colin Todd on the ball now for England. Finding Stuart Pearson. Todd again. Brookie. Still Brookie. A little bit of acceleration there. There's the cross and Pearson just too high. Devastating little burst there by Brookie. Beautiful bit of acceleration. Pearson couldn't quite finish it off. Francis with the throw for England. Thompson coming up fast. Kevin Keegan. Chance now maybe for Pearson to turn and he can't get off of the ground quickly enough before Bobby Moore gets in there and passes back to Wigan. Moore again. Now Kinalia. Pele. Trying to find a bit of space on this touchline here. Touched away by Thompson. Cherry supporting him. Now Mills. Todd. Yeah. 
Francis putting it inside again for Toth. Keegan, Brooking, here's Eddie. And Tommy Smith. Kinalia. Clements. Bob Smith. Good ball there. Stewart jump making a very good break here for the Americans. Kinali is in the middle, but uh, blocked there by Mike Shannon. We come to the last three minutes of the first half. England leading by two goals to nil, both scored by Kevin Keegan. Really it's difficult to know exactly where the picture enthusiasm for this English performance. It's hard to assess just how good this American side is. A team of individuals, the spark of Pele that can uh, open up anything. But the great thing is that an England side is getting another chance to play together before that vital game in Helsinki. And indeed they've done all that's been asked of them so far. Now, Eddie. Kinalia. Come for Clements. Turn in again. Stopped by Tom. With a walking pace football by Shannon as it comes back to Ray Clements, who's made two or three really excellent saves here. Closing in before Pearson can make anything of it, and Bob Smith finding Stewart jump. Eddie. The long ball now towards Pele. Now can Pele pull out a trick here to beat Brian Greenock? Well, he's got possession. Played inside for Julio V. Pele looking for a return pass, getting it, and couldn't get it back again. The Americans claimed handball there by Brian Greenock, but nothing was given as Brookings sweeps the ball onto the far side to Colin Todd. Clouds have gone, the sun really beating down here again in Philadelphia. Mills, Brooking, the last minute of the first half. Francis, Todd outside him again been able to find a lot of space down that touchline this afternoon, uh, Colin Todd, and now here's Brooking, and here is Todd. Played in first time again towards Kevin Keegan, trying to get a one-two, the turn by Brooking, but he only turned into trouble and Stewart jump, and that's a corner for England. Here comes the corner, taken by Trevor Brooking, curling in there, Pearson's back header. Now, can anybody get to that one? It's only pushed out as far as Thompson, but it was charged down, and the whistle in any case had gone. A free kick to America. And indeed, that's the half-time whistle, to the surprise of some of the players, as Kevin Keegan, the scorer of the two English goals that gave England that half-time lead, a performance really without a great deal of fault to it, so far as England are concerned. But as I say, it's difficult to judge just how good this American side is, a team of individuals. England leading them by two goals to nil, both scored by Kevin Keegan. So far, so good for Don Reeves men in Philadelphia. And we'll be right back with you after a short break with the second half.
further back then to Philadelphia, and that stadium that you can see 500 yards away there is one of the reasons why the crowd inside the John F. Kennedy Stadium today is a little on the thin side. That was the uh, Philadelphia Phillies baseball ground, the Veterans Stadium, where they've got a doubleheader, two games, in fact, this afternoon against the Chicago Cubs, and with the Phillies having won 16 of their last 19 games, that's where the crowd is basically going to be this afternoon. But Kevin Keegan won't worry about that. He scored the two goals that get England that half-time interval lead. As the Americans now in the red shirts kick off, attacking the goal to our left. With Stuart Scullion having come on as a substitute for the Americans. And it's Trevor Brooking, though, in possession for England. Now with Todd, and here's Jerry Francis. Todd again. Scullion, formerly with Sheffield United and with Watford, of course, to Tommy Smith. Inside for Keith Eddy. The long ball towards Keen Alia. Hooked away there for England. Scullion on, I think, in place of V. The number seven. And it's the number seven for England, Kevin Keegan, taking it up now. Watched by Bob Smith. So important that England get a good win under their belts in this game and a good understanding before they take on Finland. I think their performances on this tour have opened uh, quite a number of eyes. There's the long cross coming over too high for Mike Shannon. Such an excellent performance in Los Angeles last Sunday in which they lost in the last minute to Brazil. And then with that weakened side, having beaten Italy after being two goals down in the Yankee Stadium. Now these two goals clear of the American side and playing quite comfortably. One thinks that they could go up a little gear or two if they wanted to. But nonetheless, they're there two goals in the lead and they'll be searching for more goals in this second half. Stopped there by two at Stewart Jump though. And here's Dave Clements. Too high for Pele. Green off covering for England. And now with McMills. Being hustled by Eddie, but still finding Colin Todd. Now Francis. Although, as I say, the crowd is a bit thin here. They haven't had bad crowds for this tournament so far. They had two 30,000 crowds last weekend. A 40,000 crowd when England played in the Yankee Stadium. Something like a 26,000 crowd when Italy played Brazil in Seattle. Now Brookie. Rather when Brazil played America in that Seattle. Here's Todd. Inside again for Brooklyn. Francis. Ball bobbling a little bit there for him, and so many red shirts are back. Shannon taking on his man, Dave Clemens, and getting round him well. Shannon just flicking it there, but Bobby Moore in the way. And bringing it away for the American side now, trying to find Scullion on the far side. Tommy Smith. Stuart Jock. Dave Clements. Jump again towards Pelle. English defenders really hustling Pelle, but somehow that ball found its way to Kinalia. And a free kick. Pele really being hustled by these English defenders. They're not really giving him uh, very much of a chance to settle on the ball, and you can't blame him for that. That was Kinalia brought down, and this is the free kick. Pele has been quite devastating with one or two of these free kicks. I think this might be a little too far out, even for him, though. There he goes, and he hits it straight against the wall. It comes out to Stewart Jump. And in fact, there was, uh, I think, Scullion and Kinali are both offside. England's free kick, and it's with Francis. Shannon. A long, sweeping ball for Brooking on the far side. Chesting it all down in one movement. 
but he's followed by Tommy Smith. But still he gets it over and gets it over well towards Stuart Pearson. And a free kick given. And England have brought on a substitute as Brooking gets that cross in. Pearson getting in with the header just wide. Or rather, the Americans, in fact, have brought the substitute on number 16, Peter Chandler. And Dave Clemens coming on. Jump inside towards Pele, cut out beautifully by Todd for England. Shannon making a tremendous burst down the right there. But, uh, Chandler quickly getting in the action and stopping that English attack developing. But it's a throw now to well, the linesman changed his mind there. He was signaling a throw to England. In the end, it went to America. And here we are with Keith Eddy, Tommy Smith, Eddy again, Smith again. Now for Bob Smith, towards Kinalia. Big Italian centre forward. An international player at that, but hustled off the ball again by the England defenders. Rocking to Mills. Cherry, Bill Thompson, and Al Greenock. Brooking, and Al Mills. Keegan. Francis, Brooking again. England with a lot of players up, but there was a misunderstanding there between Brooking and Keegan. And in the end, no problems at all for the Americans. It's with Scullion. Eddie. Bobby Moore. To Peter Chandler, the substitute. On for Dave Pats. Chandler again. To Bob Smith. Scullion. Eddie. The long ball there. And Bill Thompson and Kinali is going in. And Clemens, judging it well, took a buffeting there from the Italian. Number two, Colin Todd. They forward to Pearson. Francis. And now Shannon. Nice little chip pass there. What a well-timed run there by Francis. He's done it around the goalkeeper, Rigby. And it's there for number three. A beautifully taken goal by the England skipper, Jerry Francis. That dummy on the goalkeeper was absolutely superb. They forward now. And as the goalkeeper comes out, there's the dummy. And now keeps his head well into the corner of the net. 3 0. Well, that was tremendous skill and great coolness as well, with Jerry Francis scoring that third goal for England. Pele now for the American team. To Tommy Smith, to Stuart Scully. inside the first 10 minutes of the second half and a really very comfortable lead now for England as Francis takes it up again. Exactly the encouragement they want for this important game that's coming up. Now Shannon going past the defender Chandler. Chandler coming back well at him though, still with Mike Shannon until Bobby Moore dispossesses him. 
All for the Americans. Jump beaten by Colin Todd. A chip pass under the far side. Turn inside now for Brooking. Is this number four? No! Incredibly it isn't. Well, Brooking seemed to do everything right there. A lovely little pass that found him and he took it past the goalkeeper. It looked odds on it going in, but it didn't. So England really turning on the style in those couple of minutes there when they might have had two goals, instead they've got just the one, but they lead this American team by three goals to nil. Which is one more than Brazil managed against the Americans and one less than the Italians managed last weekend. But Shannon now for England, seeking another goal. And indeed, if uh, England win this by four or five goals and the Italians manage to beat Brazil today, England could win this bicentennial tournament. Well, a free kick there. And the challenge, well, it looks shoulder to shoulder. The ball was a couple of yards off. Scullion. Now Tommy Smith. Stuart Pearson now for England. The Kevin Keegan. Shannon away up on the far side. So too is Mick Mills. A lot of space out there on that left-hand side. England really calling the tune at the moment as Shannon takes it up. A flick on for Stuart Pearson. Shannon's got into the middle. So too is Kevin Keegan there. Still Pearson. Oh, and Keegan missed that by a whisker. Pearson, who worked so hard for such little reward this afternoon, but this time he got past Bobby Moore, and Keegan was a fraction away. Smith now for America. Eddie. Bob Smith. Jump. Finding Chandler. Ginalia. Giving it away to Shannon. Shielding it well. Looking around, collecting his wits. He's got Keegan alongside him. But he finds Todd. Now Francis. Good workout now this for England. Building their confidence all the time as Todd makes another good galloping run down that right touchline. Francis. The early ball played in again towards Kevin Keegan. Played back again there towards Shannon, just wide of that goal, and they're really peppering Rigby now in that American goal. Good build-up again by England. Keegan, a nice little touch there. Shannon's first-time shot. So Bob Smith now for America on the far side. Three goals to nil down. Francis turning it back to Ray Clements. Brookie. Keegan, beautiful touch. Lovely timing there by the England number seven, but also a good tackle there by Mike Ingram. But Keegan back again, looking for more. Here's Keegan, the crowd enjoying his busy little stride. He's become quite a hero out here in America. Now finding the number nine, Stuart Pearson. Todd, Shannon. But the one-two didn't come off, and Chandler gets it away. Off the hands of Pearson and a free kick. Scullion, Pele inside him, but he bypasses Pele. Fine Stewart jump, cut out again by Jerry Francis. Look at the space up ahead of Mike Shannon now. A beautiful ball there played to him by Jerry Francis. Stewart Pearson's waiting in the middle. 
Shannon sizing up the cross. Keegan now taking it nicely on his body. A lot of yellow shirts up in support for England. Pearson now. This time played again for Jerry Francis and we're back almost where we started. Francis with the long cross. Rigby with the catch. Eddie for America. Scullion away outside him. Here's Stuart Scullion. Cherry was trying to force him inside, but Scullion loves to dart down the wing and get his crosses in. That's just what he's done there now, but it uh, was too high and behind Kinalia, and it'll be a throw to England. Just over a quarter of an hour of the second half gone. England leading by three goals to nil. Two of them from Keegan, one from Jerry Francis. Here's Francis. To talk. Offside. Flag a little late going up. Pearson claiming that his run was well timed, but the referee or the linesman together disagreed. Tommy Smith on the far side for America. Bob Smith. A long cross there towards Kinalia. Bill Thompson there, Pele couldn't get in there, Stewart jumped trying hard to get in there, and the tackles were flying in there, giving America a free kick, and a very interesting one now, which Pele is going to take. And Pele with a shot, just wide. So, a goal kick, which Ray Clements will take. Stewart jump. Bobby Smith to Pelly. I think the England have played Pelly well. They really made no special plans, but they hustled him and they've not allowed him to think to settle on the ball to work out any little bits of magic. Played him very well indeed. Shannon to Francis. Bill Thompson. Keegan. And Brooking. There's that cross again for Brooking. Always putting the goalkeeper under pressure. Ideally just a little too close to the American goalkeeper on that occasion. Kinalia, who's been given no rope at all there. Todd taking on his man. Good run there by Todd and just over and just wide. Tremendous piece of play here by Colin Todd. And Rigby in a lot of trouble there and it wasn't far off the mark. But again with a solid challenge there on Kinalia and getting up quickly and finding Keegan. Now with Shannon. In towards Stuart Pearson. Good ball for him and he didn't know where it was. Very valuable afternoon this for the English football team. Getting to know each other just that little bit better. Not under a great deal of pressure. Certainly the spirit in the whole camp throughout this American tour has been absolutely sky high. Now Tommy Smith for America. A long ball towards Kinalia. Now can Kinalia get him here now? This must be a chance and a beautiful save there. By Clements. Kinalia really hustling and worrying that English defence there in a one against one situation. And Brian Greenoff in a fair bit of trouble until Clements saved it. Well, that's the closest the Americans have been to a goal since the opening quarter of an hour or so when Pele got in a couple of shots, one of them from a free kick. 
Now Keegan a touch on towards Brooking, but Brooking really didn't have a chance with that one. Bill Thompson on for Kevin Keegan. Nicely weighted right in front of him again as Keegan takes it up once more. Shannon going roaring down the right for him. Here's Shannon. Taking him on and knocked out of the play there by the American substitute Peter Chandler. A fairly crude challenge there by the American substitute as Shannon was really going, really motoring there. So it'll be a free kick. But Shannon, first of all, will need treatment. Whether Mr. Ungabula will allow it. Yes, he has allowed Fred Street to come on. Much shout at Don Reevy. In fact, uh, getting Peter Taylor warming up. And this is what caused Mike Shannon's trouble. Really was in full flight. And it looks as though he's OK to go on. So Peter Taylor warming up in vain. Jerry Francis with the free kick and on the far side. And it might come to Brooking. Back now for Mick Mills. Brookie. Keegan out there. Really can't get enough of the ball at the moment. And Shannon was right in there as well. I come back for Keegan. Mike Shannon, who's played in all three of these tour games. The skipper, of course, against Italy. The first time he'd been skipper of England saying that it was the proudest day of his soccer career when that happened. And he celebrated, of course, with those two beautiful goals in the second half that got England on the way to victory. While England are on their way to another victory today, here in Philadelphia, leading by three goals to nil. And here's Brooking now for England. Played for Jerry Francis. Todd again prepared to go up on the outside. Francis with a shot, but not enough power. Tommy Smith, the long ball towards Pele, who's been pretty muted this afternoon, watched by Greenock, or by Cherry, by whichever English defender is closest to him, and done a good, hard tackling job on Pele. Mike England. Stuart John. Play Brady. Nicely allowed to go through to Tommy Smith. Eddie away up on the outside. Stuart Scullion darting through the middle. And now here is Pelle. Played on almost perfectly there for Kinalia. Except the last for America, Phil Thompson was there. And his pass has now found uh, Jerry Francis. Now it's with Keegan. Little darting run takes him into a bit of space. Pearson. Shannon away on the right again. Still with Pearson though. Played for Keegan once more. And still Keegan, somehow it seemed impossible that he could have got it, but he did, in the end, could do nothing with it. Go kick. Tommy Smith. There's the cross coming in again towards Kinalia. There was space there for him and a good save once more from Ray Clemens and Pelly. <laughs> a smile on his face and one from Ray Clemens as he tried to kick that ball out of the arms of the England goalkeeper. A lovely cross here by Tommy Smith and look at the space the English defence allowed Kinalia but Clemens saved well. Keegan taking on Pele again. Little dummy pass, and that was a, looked like a handball by Kinalia. Ball comes through to Todd. Pele, of course, who's playing here in America for the New York Cosmos. 
They've got him on a six-year contract. They expect him to play for the next three years. And then, as they say, to merchandise him for a further three years. Well, it's Jerry Francis on the ball now for England. To Trevor Brooking. Again, the cross coming in. Pearson trying to make something of it, but he was clearly pushing in on the back of Bobby Moore. Free kick. Eddie to Pelle. A touch now for Jump. Played on again for Pelle. This might be interesting as he comes towards Phil Thompson. Played on again. And Kinalia didn't read it. Really was a different language. And England take it up again at walking pace here, as you can see, with Colin Todd. Phil Thompson to Brian Greenall. Thompson again. England really, uh, by and large, look pretty secure at the back when they've been challenged. Just that one moment when uh, Inalia was allowed really too much space to get the header in from Tommy Smith's cross. England at the moment shaking down into a pretty useful side and it's incredible to think that that disappointing performance at Hamden Park when they were beaten from Scotland was really only a matter of weeks ago. They, uh, weeks ago. It really impressed a lot of international observers by their performances here in America. And now it's Scullion leaving it instead for Tommy Smith to take it up for the Americans. Kelly right up there. Kinali is up there. Scullion on the far side. Here he is. Inside for Eddie. Scullion again. There's a shot that time too high. So the England subs enjoying the sunshine and enjoying the prospect of a good finish to this England tour. In fact, within an hour of finishing this game, the whole England party will be on their way to the airport and a home. Very much, I think, refreshed by what has happened in the last 10 days or so here in America. Now Shannon. Brooking making a great run away down the left and uh, he was picked up beautifully by Shannon there. So Brooking again for England. A little chip cross but into the side netting. And if he could have just pulled it back, both Shannon and Pearson were waiting. Keegan wasn't far away either. <laughs> Scullion. <laughs> Smith. Finalia coming towards that one. And the ball finds Colin Todd. Keegan. Todd. Brooking. Oh, he took a shot there. And the referee allowed it to go on from the American number two, Bob Smith. And he finds Pelly. Just look how quickly Francis closed on him. And Pelly went past him as though he wasn't there. But now Todd playing it back to Clements. That was a bit of vintage Pelly there as he went past Jerry Francis in the middle of the field. American crowds absolutely idolizing Pelly over these last few weeks since he joins the New York side. But now it's Shannon, and they've got a lot of respect for him as well. And for Keegan on the ball again for England. Looking for a yard, looking for somebody to pick up. And Brooking is right out there with him. Here comes Brooking now. And there comes the cross, but it wasn't a good one. He claimed it was handball there by Tommy Smith. But uh, it was said, I think, more in hope than with conviction. Pele. Again, look how quickly two men closed on him. Here's Francis. Todd was the other one. Played for Brian Greenhoff. Todd again. Greenhoff. Thompson across the whole of the back four now to Mick Mills of Ipswich on the far side. 
Keegan getting quite a bit of pushing and shoving there from Bob Smith but he got away with it and here's Jump Eddie Cherry closing on him and here's Pele trying to get it with Canalia here's Pele again and Cherry was right with him a beautiful piece of defensive play there by Trevor Cherry for England Brooking crowd were booing but Cherry took that ball beautifully from the Brazilian star Francis Shannon back for Todd Bobby Moore for America and that somehow still has a very strange ring about it Quinalia Pele oh a lovely pass there by Pele now for Scullion Quinalia waiting in the middle oh and he almost got a beautiful goal there and in fact it just went over the top in the end a tremendous shot there that caught the English defender. A bicycle kick there as uh, Scullion crossed this ball. Look at the acrobatics there, and in fact it might have uh, hit Phil Thompson in the face. Whether that was a boot or whether it was the ball, the ball finally going over the top. Well, was it the boot or was it the ball as Kinalia comes in there? It's the ball, I think. So this Memorial Day crowd here in the John F. Kennedy Stadium in Philadelphia having quite an early afternoon out in the beautiful sunshine. Impressed, I would think, by the way England have taken command of this game and are leading by three goals to nil. But now facing this corner for the Americans. Scullion hitting it high. Mike England's come up on the far side. But it was uh, Brian Greenock who got it away. Tommy Smith. Played here for Bob Smith. Now for Bobby Moore. Scullion on this uh, near side. Moore again. Planted forward for Stewart Jump. And a very good ball it was indeed, but Jump was able, unable to do very much with it. And here's Francis for England. Pele closing off. Thompson. Nice ball there. Good play again by Francis. Here's Keegan. Playing well together, linking a number of good passing movements together in this stage of the game, England. Shannon on the far side. Mills. Greenock. And now Pearson, he's onside. The, red, the linesman kept his flag down. Still Pearson, Keegan waiting in the middle, and instead it comes to Trevor Brookie. Played back for Bob Rigby, the American goalkeeper four years of professional that American uh, goalkeeper but he's only played 80 competitive games started playing because he said he was too small for American football well it's Stuart Jump now for America the crowd beginning to howl now as they sense the Americans are coming a little more into this game Finalia right in there too and he hoped to get a touch that might have been a vital one but Phil Thompson again was defending well for England even at the expense of a corner uh, Mike England. And a corner for America. And it's with Tommy Smith. Now Keegan. Absolutely acres of pace up ahead of him. And uh, substitute on the number 14, John Kowani for forward. On for America. Mick Mills making a tremendous burst down that left-hand side. He's got Stuart Pearson and Kevin Keegan waiting in the middle. Here's Keegan. Played across the goal to Pearson. Played back for Jerry Francis. Trying to get a 1-2 going there. And he's come up for Francis. Past the goalkeeper. Is this number four? Francis playing tricks and losing in the end. Well, well, well. That really should have been number four. And I think if the pressure had been on Francis a little more than it was, it would have been. He started playing a few tricks here. And in the end, Bob Rigby got hold of it. Shannon now for England.
played for Francis. Now, can he make something with this one? No, it's just past the post. That's Stuart Pearson, who was right in there hoping to get something at that far post. Trying to teach Cherry a lesson or two. Still with Pele. Playing the short, simple pass to Kinalia. Equally the short, simple pass this time to Scullion. For the American side. Still with Scullion. Now with Kinalia. On to Pele. A lovely dummy. And in the end, Colin Todd just stuck out a foot and played it back to Ray Clements. Shannon obstructed. And a pity the referee, who I don't think has been particularly good this afternoon, this Swiss referee. A pity he didn't allow any advantage there with England. Nicely in control of that situation. Mr. Ungerbuhler from Switzerland. It's with Francis. And now Brookie. A little chip inside. Keith Eddy there for the American team. And a back heel to Rigby. Inside the last 10 minutes now, England leading by three goals to nil. Two in the first half from Kevin Keegan, one in the second half from Jerry Francis. Bob Smith now, the number two for America. Played again to Pelle with uh, Todd closing quickly. It's with Brooking again. Played for Shannon. A little burst of pace, and then showing just a little too much of it to Bobby Moore. Todd. Francis. Brooking. And Pele dispossessing him. The crowd enjoyed that. Kinalia. Scullion in a bit of space there, getting the ball. Tommy Smith going up outside him. Scullion now on the ball for America. Through, or at least he hoped it was through to Pele, but just look again how quickly Colin Todd came in there. The ball, the ball came through to Pele. Rookie. Well, Keegan with one boot on and one off. Well, both boots off, in fact. Well, the ground must be a bit hard, or maybe he wants to just get rid of him. And Pele, in fact, saying to the referee, having quite an argument with the referee in the middle, arguing about... Keegan having taken his boots off while the game was in progress. Whether he thinks that Keegan holding the boots could be a bit of a weapon or not, I don't know. But Don Reeve, in fact, taking Kevin Keegan off and putting Peter Taylor on for the last few minutes of this game. Maybe one or two blisters on this hard service. Here's Kevin Keegan. And I think what Pelly was objected to was the fact that those boots in the hands of uh, Keegan might have constituted a danger for any opposing players. Now it's with Brooke. Shannon. Brooking again. Peter Taylor on the outside. With Todd. Brooking again. Will he get that before he crosses the line? It has, and a good save. Good piece of goalkeeping there by Rigby. If he failed with that one, it was only a touch either for Shannon or for Pearson to be goal number four. It's with Mills for England. Thompson. Francis. Looking for Todd now with another England substitute beginning to warm up. Number 12, Mick Doyle. See him there. And it's Colin Todd who's coming on. The referee insisting that the game should wait for Ford until Todd leaves the field before we can get started. In fact, it's a throw then, which Kowalik will take now for America. Bobby Moore. to Bob Smith, to Tommy Smith. 
Pele, bit of space for him there. Scullion up ahead of him. Still Pele. Kinalia. A back heel again, and it very nearly came to Pele. Doyle. And now Jerry Francis. Doyle. Read off. And back to Ray Cox. Well, it's really the formality now playing out the last three or four minutes. The crowd were whistling a bit, though they didn't like that back pass. And here's Kinalia. That'll please them up a little bit more. It's with Pele. Scullion trying to hit one and curl one, but uh, miscuing badly way over that crossbar. Really hasn't had very many chances, Pele, this afternoon. He looked quite dangerous early on with one or two free kicks, but he's been very closely watched. Ginalia playing the short ball now. Pele, in the end, as he does so often, playing the simple ball, but playing it accurately. And Scullion over the top. It's Jerry Francis now for England. Cut out by Stuart John. Here's Tommy Smith. Pele. A little touch there, but it didn't come off for him to Peter Taylor now for England. Shannon. Kane, the long ball, and Brooking is on the far side. They've hit some beautifully accurate long balls, but Brooking couldn't make anything of that one. So Smith for America. Now with Eddie. Pele. Francis after him. Pele shielding the ball well there as he found Kinalia. So Giorgio Quinalia again, a lad who was brought up in Cardiff and played for Swansea. Now with Scullion, and that's a go! Scullion for America. Quinalia, the Italian international, did well here, and Scullion was lurking, as you can see, the number 12, and his finishing was really first class into the back of the English net. America 1, England 3. Stuart Scullion, the scorer for America. Well, that's cheered up the crowd in Philadelphia. And it's only the second goal that England have conceded on this three-match American tour. Uh, what am I saying? Of course, they conceded two against Italy as well. It's the fourth goal they've conceded. But now here's uh, Greenock. Mills. Taylor. What I should really have said was, of course, that it's the first goal that America has scored in this tour. They lost 4-0 to Italy, 2-0 to Brazil. Now they're 3-1 down against England. But at least they've got the ball in the back of the net. And here's Bobby Moore. The last couple of minutes of the game. Good ball there, play towards Chandler now. Doyle going after him. Chandler can't keep it in play. Goal kick. Francis. Taylor back for Thompson. Now for Doyle. Bob Smith got it away. Peter Taylor tried to make something of it. Here's Cherry. Crooking. England really have played a little more than three-quarter pace, certainly for most of the second half. Comfortably in control in spite of that American goal. And now here's...
as uh, Shannon. Now Pelle. A touch again for Scully and the crowd enjoying this now. Kinali is right up in there. Nick Mills is there too. And it'll come there. Oh, and a beautiful save there from the number 14, Kowalik, by Ray Clements. Scully in again in the middle of it and they're making quite a burst in these last two or three minutes, the Americans. Mills couldn't quite do anything with it. And Kowalik with a shot that was well saved. Taylor. Taylor. Now Shannon. But looking on the far side. 16,000 crowd in the John F. Kennedy Stadium here. Enjoying that last little burst by the American side, but it's a uh, corner for England, which Brooking will take. Playing it here to his skipper, Jerry Francis. Time almost up now. And a tour that will end on a successful note for England. By the way they played, even though they lost against Brazil, by the way they came back, against Italy in the Yankee Stadium and by the way they've controlled this game here against Pele and company with Trevor Cherry hitting that ball wide so it's a goal kick Rigby with it time almost up the Swiss referees already looked at his watch and here come the Americans again with Pele scullying away on this left touch line but they're away again now Although the English defence is closing very quickly, Kowalik is there, Kinalia tried to get a shot in, but in the end it was blocked once more and turned away for a throw to the Americans. Certainly a very spirited burst in these last uh, four or five minutes by the Americans. Pelle. Got Chandler in support and Scullion in support. But with a cheeky bit of skill like that, you don't need an awful lot of support. Chandler turning it again to Kinalia. He's onside, played there by Mike Doyle. But green off now for England. As the final whistle goes and the American tour is over for England, defeat against Brazil, victory against Italy, and here today against Pele and the Americans, another victory, America 1, England 3, with their goals coming from Kevin Keegan 2, Jerry Francis 1, Stuart Scullion having replied for the American side in a spirited last few minutes. So there we are, we hope you've enjoyed that, but now let's get the views again of the England team manager, Don Reavy, talking with John Bromley. to the uh, performance today? Well, I thought that uh, it was very, very sticky and very hot uh, conditions, but uh, 
Kevin Keegan got a good goal, the first goal. His second goal was a great ball from Mick Chan, and then Jerry Francis had a wonderful solo goal. Then it could have been anything, possibly. But in the last five minutes, uh, we gave them one or two chances, and uh, they got a good goal, and Ray Clemens had to make one or two good saves. Especially when it was 1-0, uh, 2-0, um, well, he had two free kicks that I thought Ray Clemens had two world-class saves from them. One down low to his right, and one up in the top corner to his right. And without these shares, I might have been back in the game. But the all-round team performance, I was very pleased with. Talking about Pele, what was your feeling about Pele today? Well, it just goes that you see what he's like in his pump, because the lad, he's lost a lot of weight as Pele, and he's very quick. He's very, very quick uh, for the one that's getting on a bit past 30, and is still a dangerous player, and loads of skill. And it was a pleasure, I think, for some of our lads to play against him. What's your lessons from this tour? Well, we've mauled it together as a side a little bit, and I'm sure it, m it must help us for Finland. Uh, they've got better each game, and um, now we can only wait and have a few days rest and build up for the very important match on the 30th of June. What happens now before you go to Finland? Have you got the boys together? Four or five days rest after we get back tomorrow morning, and then we... Uh, then we'll come back a week today, ready for finishing the match. Well, John, thanks very much. Thanks very much indeed. So the view. So, so the views there of the England manager Don Reevy, and now from all of us here in Philadelphia, it's goodbye to you all. <laughs>